Father, we'd like to thank you for the gift of this day. Heavenly Father, bless us with your word, feed us with your word, and use me as your own vessel, through which you are going to deliver thy word unto us. In Christ Jesus we have prayed and breathed. Amen. Amen. Get seated. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, Buana Asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. My name is Joseph M. Munyo, and I am saved. I love you so much. I was missing this day, and we thank God for this day. Our text this morning is Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And our theme is servant leaders in our families, church, and community. Servant leaders in our families, church, and community. Wajakoya, Wajakoya, Wajakoya. Snakes. What else? Hyenas before I forget. What else? Dog meat. What else? And what we call in Kikuyu, Vangi. Dominate the manifesto of George Wajakoya, who claims that he is a servant leader. Is he really a servant leader? You and I are servant leaders. I would like to acknowledge that you and I are servant leaders in our respective families, workplaces, businesses, socioeconomic spheres, churches, and communities. Tell your neighbor, you are a leader. But what is servant leadership? What is servant leadership? One day, one day, brethren, one day, a few servant leaders were interviewed, and this is what they said about their secrets of servant leadership. They said, we, the servant leaders, seek to be selfless agents of positive change. We acknowledge our mortality and limited time on earth. We therefore recognize that the highest or the biggest loss in one's life is a loss of time. They continue, hence we have no time for small wars. We have no time for small wars. We recognize that small wars belong to those who have no vision to fight for belong to those who have no vision to fight for. And they said, we have no time for revenge. We have no time for revenge. Because we know that before you embark on the path of revenge, you should dig two glaives. How many glaives? or be prepared to waste your limited time 
and energy. In particular, Nelson Mandela said, I had to move beyond the difficulties and pains that I underwent in prison in order to avoid putting our country on fire by not shaking the hands of the enemy, namely the white people. Brethren, these servant leaders finally said, we remain focused on our visions, or our big pictures, and ignore side shows. Well, the observations are summarized by Marcus Eulalius, who said, servant leaders should be selfless. Are you selfless? Focused, are you focused? Civil, are you civil? Inspiring, are you inspiring? Prayerful, are you prayerful? God-fearing, are you God-fearing? This is what we should become in our respective families, places of work, churches, and so on. Brethren, these are the servant leaders that we are called to vote in when? On 9th August 2022, in our forthcoming general elections in our beloved country, Kenya. Now, this matter is exemplified by Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and chapter 2, verses 18 to 19. It was about 445 BCE, and some of God's people were still living in the old Babylonian Empire that was now ruled by the Persians. Through his permissive will, God had allowed the Jews' people to be taken captive as a punishment for their sin of disobedience. However, after 70 years' captivity, God raised up Silas, the Persian king. King Silas allowed God's people, the Jews, to go back to the land of Israel. You know that Zerubbabel led the first group of exiles back to the land of Israel. After some years, Ezra led the second group back to the same place. You also know that Nehemiah lived in this same period. The Jews that had already returned and completed the rebuilding of the temple. But there was a problem somewhere. The walls around the city, the Jerusalem walls, and the gates remained in shambles. For the next 70 years, the Jerusalem, the Jerusalem walls and gates represented the protection of the temple and the city at large. <clears throat> Nehemiah was a cup bearer for the Persian king at Axasis. He was in his comfort zone. One day, Hanani, one of his brothers, and some other men from Judah visited Nehemiah. Then Nehemiah asked them, how things were in Jerusalem. Then they told him that Jerusalem walls had been broken down and the gates of the city burned. Now, feeling disturbed by the poor protection of the temple and the city, Nehemiah forgot about his comfort zone. Servant leaders can forget their comfort zone. Nehemiah did and decided to move out of it. Why? In order to serve another king, namely God. Surely, when Nehemiah heard the news, he emotionally felt weak and sat down. 
For some days, the Bible says, he cried, fasted, mourned, and prayed for God to tell him what needed to be done during this moment. He also made a plan that he would use to solve the realized problem. Brethren, as leaders of our homes, businesses, community, and so on, we should feel disturbed. Tell your neighbor, feel disturbed. Now my baby Zuri. Tell your neighbor, feel disturbed. We should feel disturbed by the felt needs of the people. Servant leaders are a people who get disturbed by the problems of their followers. Motivate them to act and walk with them towards solving their problems. Our homes, brethren, churches, workplaces, nation require such leaders. This claim reminds us about Abraham Lincoln once when he said, you cannot help people permanently by doing for them what they could and should do for themselves. Servant leaders should be enamorers, but not mere doers, because we cannot develop people. We can only enable people to develop themselves sustainably. When Julius Nyerere observed that seeking to develop people generates poverty. Concerned servant leaders enable people to develop themselves. Nyerere calls this people-centered development. Leadership is about unlocking, unlocking people's potential to better their lives. Brethren, like Nehemiah, tell your neighbor, you are a servant leader. Servant leaders should make strategic plans that will guide people to meet the set objectives. They should have a big picture or a disturbing project. Do you have a big picture or a disturbing project in your family? Do you have a big picture or a disturbing project at your place of work? Do you have the same in your church? Do you have the same in your community? Servant leaders should have a big picture or a disturbing project because where there is no vision, the people perish. Leaders who cannot see the big picture will never plan to achieve it because it is not there. And what is not there does not disturb anybody. In the, fourth, in the forthcoming general elections in Kenya, brethren, we should elect servant leaders who are genuinely disturbed by our failed local and national problems. These should become our leaders. We should elect leaders who have big pictures. We should elect leaders who have big pictures like Nehemiah, brethren, whose big picture was rebuilding the Jerusalem walls. Electing such leaders will help us to vote out the wajakurization of this nation. It will help us to vote out the wajakurization of our young people. It will help us to vote in the right leaders. May God help us to become servant leaders. And brethren, we have no room for vote apathy. We must be prepared to vote. Because even if you do not vote, they will vote. And unfortunately, they will give you the wrong leaders. May the Lord help us to become servant leaders and elect people who are servant leaders in our forthcoming general elections. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.